Oh, snap. In case you're wondering where you are, you at the Mad Jeff Music Show, and that right there is fire. Get your back up against the wall and, like, slide, like, sideways, you know, like, don't burn yourself, because I ain't got insurance for all of that, I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm so glad you could make it. I'm glad you're back. And if you're not on live because you missed that window, it's all good, because here's the deal. This is archived on YouTube and Facebook. It'll be there. This conversation ain't going nowhere, man. People is here. What's good, man? I'm in the house, and I'm your host. That's me. I'm Jeff Taylor. And you can hold your applause. Well, unless you just can't help yourself, then you can go ahead and clap it up. It's all good with me. I'm so glad you're here, man. Look, I'm I'm trying to do something that probably it's been done before, I'm sure, but it ain't been done before by me and the people that I know. And that is I'm trying to shine a little light on the people that I know from like, you know, from different places, you know, there's musicians that I know from all over the place, man. And a lot of these cats have left and had made it a mark on me, left it, in, you know, a mark just from seeing them play. And this cat that I'm invited on the show today is a dude that when I met him, I nobody knew me. I was always behind the scenes. Nobody knew who I was. So I could kind of sneak into a room and just kind of be in that room and nobody would know who the hell I was. It didn't matter. But I remember once being in a little warehouse somewhere in uh, in Minneapolis Lake Street, Nicolette area behind the behind the Kmart or some crap like that. And this dude was on keyboards next to me. And I remember somebody saying, Oh, that's Morris. Yo, he he's from he's down from he's from Memphis. He just got here. He boy, this boy, let me just tell you something. I stood next to this dude and I and I tried to control myself. He could play. He could really, 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 really play. And the thing that he that was that struck me was that he wasn't just playing no pop fluff or not like that. He was rooted. In like the the soul, the Memphis soul of like Isaac Hayes and and Johnny Cash and all of that that went along with that Memphis soul scene and the, you know the, the whole stacks. You know he just had a whole vibe with him that said, "I'm not from here, but what I'm going to bring is going to leave an impression on you that you won't soon forget." So look, without further ado, man, because I'm tired of just talking to myself, I want to bring my guy in here and let you meet him and see him because he is a legend. He's, he's toured the world. This dude, he can not only is he a great player, he's a great arranger. He's toured the world. He's princes and, and kings and queens. Morris Hayes, better known as Mr. Hayes. Oh, we, let's get him in here first of all. How about this? Boom. Morris Hayes is here. Mr. Hayes is in the house. What's up, brother? Man, it's so good to see you, man. How is life treating you, man? How's life? Uh, man, it's been crazy. It's been a crazy ride, but um, you know, my I had both lost both parents to like COVID and uh, some other relatives. But it, but it's but to, thank God, as good as it is, brother. I'm sorry to hear that, Morris. Man, I really am sorry to hear that, man. This COVID thing has been a real, a real drag, and this is another reason that I'm doing what we're doing because you know, what, this show is about bringing guys together. Because we, as we know, you know. You're not out there being you're not able to tour, you're not able to get out there as you used to be and, and be in front of those audiences and stuff like that. And I don't want people to forget. I want people to know because you don't even, they don't even print our names on the records. You don't even get records anymore with your name yeah. on the record so yeah. people can know who you are and what your contribution to that is. And that was always one of the things that I always fought for, you know, Mr. Hayes, is that mm -hmm. you know, if I'm gonna put the work in, put my name on it, so on down the line, people right. will be able to say. Oh yeah, maybe I could. Maybe you know your influence on that will benefit me here, and we can maybe work together on down the line. It's kind of writing yourself a ticket in the yeah. future, in a sense, right? And if you can't Absolutely. get out on the tour, you can't get out there. You can't really do. You can't even pass out your card. You can't even get out there and say this is me. You know what I mean? So I just sure, had this sure. this this brilliant idea because you know, hey, let me just show you something because Amazon will come to your house. So I got all these camera angles. See, I, this is my overhead angle of how oh, I run the show. Dope, dope. You know what I mean? I, I, got, I got my little keyboard under here for next time you come by my house, you know, you can get over here and get jazzy for me. Yeah. It, it's just basically trying to get the get the arrangement in so I can move on to the, to the programming of the beat and other stuff. But here's my other side. I got a little angle here where I can pick oh, up my, that's dope, my son. little axe and, and play. This is my studio, my whole run. Like I said, I don't know what makes me think I can do this, bro. There's a lot that goes into this, bro. There's a lot that goes into it. I got another little angle over here. Close That's up for cool my mama. Game, That's my mama's angle. So during COVID, I spent a lot of time, you know, working on this technology and trying to trying to understand live streaming because what I want to do eventually is get out here and do some concerts and work with musicians like yourself, come to you with a small setup, plug it in, and then put guys in different rooms, your bathroom, your kitchen, or whatever, you know what I mean? And then stream this junk live. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So anyway, man, enough about me and my show. Enough about no, me. No, that's dope show. though, man. I like it. <laughs> hey, man, I'm so glad you're here, man. Look, I want to show you something. I want to share something with, with the audience, bro. Look at this right here, bro. Look at this. Look at this right here. Look at this. This man, go, <laughs> this man got, look, you, Morris, you, 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 you always had the best keyboards too. Like the, you know, those are dope keyboards right there without question. And they're big keyboards. So you're not like a little simple yeah. mini keyboard kind of playing guy. You're a big, give me the big keyboard kind of guy, huh? Yeah, I really uh, like the range of the keyboards and everything. And I and I just started endorsing like Roland. And uh, they have a really dope one that's like a really controller friendly. And uh, that's the kind of stuff I like because you can affect parameters in real time. Incredible. So do me a favor, man. Tell me a little bit about just your journey up to Minneapolis. I know you arrived around the same time I did in the uh, in the 90s, early yeah. 90s. And we were kind of both new on the scene. And you know how that, that was a weird thing to kind of get in there and fit in. It was, wasn't it odd? I know, Morris, when I arrived, and I was telling Walt this the other time, me and Walt talked. The first time I got into a room with a bunch of guys in a jam session, everybody was prettier to me by like a long shot, like the eyelashes, <laughs> makeup, boots with belts and chains. And I was just like, <laughs> I was so, I was so misplaced, bro. I was like, how do I yeah. fit? How do I fit? Because I was in Thames, you know, I was in Timberlands or whatever, and yeah. just to flesh out of New York. But, but not an experience I would ever change, man. How'd that go for you arriving in there, man? I know you worked with lots. Well, of it it was a little bit of a different situation. Uh, you know, when I was um, living in Memphis, we we kind of vibe with the time. We like that whole suit and tie kind of vibe, you know, but. Uh, and it's funny because I ended up telling Prince one time, I said, I said, Prince, we love playing your music. And it was the eighties, but we, but we couldn't roll with that fashion. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we had to like, go like the time, go get these zoot suits and, and do that whole vibe. Right. Uh, but it was cool though, man. We got up there. It was real different. The androgyny was heavy. <laughs> That's the least. least. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. You mentioned the time because one of the, one of the opportunities you had after getting there shortly was that when I got there, Jimmy and Terry brought me in because they really up their ante right. in terms of where they wanted to go with their label and their production company and so mm -hmm. forth. And they had no more time for the time. It was essentially like, look, we, we, we moving on. And you were brought in to right. replace uh, to replace Jimmy Jam, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. Right. right? That's correct. That had That's to be an correct. interesting thing. It was, it was, it was amazing, bro, because, uh, you know, from doing local things around town and, different stuff like this and then to have you know jerome benton reach out and say hey man we, we we're about to go do some stuff in japan and and uh it's kind of like going from the outhouse to the white house you know? <laughs> right it's like, it, it just was like a big promotion but uh it was very cool man you know working with jelly bean and morris and everybody and i wanted to strangle bean but he ended up being one of the, the, the things that was uh pivotal for me dealing with Prince, you know, really dealing with a real MD. Right, right, right. And you've picked up that you've picked up that skill too. I know you, you had some engineering chops back in the early days from from what I would hear, you know? Yeah. I was always interested in the you know the studio vibe. I just I, because I'm a geek. I'm a gear geek. I love uh, equipment. But at the time, you know, back in the day, if you said you were going to the studio, it wasn't to the bedroom with your laptop. It was like a real studio with outboard gear and, and a console and all of these kinds of things. And so I was interested in that. And, and working with Brown Mark, man, he had a full-fledged studio in his basement, like Paisley Park Jr. at his house. And, and I didn't know you could really do that. Mm. And it was uh, that was the thing that really like endeared me to it and just like, I want to know this side of the game. And I learned a lot from Mark Brown. I feel you on that, and I was the same way. I was all about like, let's get the let's get the studio at the house, and I don't know when I'm going to have the yeah. time, but I guess I'd rather be doing this and a lot of other things. And uh, so that those, that guy Brown Mark was essential, kind of in bringing you in and, and helping you get in and fit in and all that, and and that's awesome. He's a great guy, man. Just one of the just one of the one of the yeah. best guys up in Minneapolis to to encounter in a situation like that. Um, but then, you know, but yeah. then, but then after that, man, I mean, you came in, you got in with an MPG new power generation and, you know, mm -hmm. what, what people don't under, you know, in my opinion, Morris, uh, MPG is one of the most underrated, miss most mistaken bands in the history of all bands. 
And the reason is because you guys had a you guys had a dilemma. You were trying to take that funk that was inbred in all of y'all and then commercialize it to a certain sound with samples on the snares and all of that. And that was a yeah. difficult thing yeah. to do at that yeah. time when hip hop was going like, ah! and then R&B was going like, what? Right. You know, it was like right in the yeah. straddle in that middle ground. And that was a tough thing to do. But yeah. I never, I never doubted the musicality of the group. You guys could play Mike Bland, Larry Graham, Mike Scott, Tommy Barbarella. Yeah, yeah. Larry yeah. Graham, and that, I mean, yeah, Graham <laughs> having Graham as your bass player. That that was that was like having Jacques Cousteau clean your fish tank. <laughs> 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 that's classic that's classic but you're right because when i saw the footage I, all i could think about is the the one the the, the root is 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 solid Be between that and yeah. the kick drum of mike Bland, you know you're gonna be there and then god rest in, and, and rest in peace john i mean you're gonna be there on the yeah. one the yeah. beach always gonna be there with a bass player like that and a kick drum yeah. like that i mean michael would always make you remember what a one is unless was he was directed not to uh, there was one song we did called Ass Whooping in a Trunk, where Prince asked Michael to play everywhere except for the one. <laughs> and it's crazy. That's nuts. But that's the kind of thing he would challenge guys to do, though. He would he would push you guys to just, yeah. I mean, you, more yeah. tours all over the world, right? All over the world. So he, he, Prince was known as a guy that rehearsed you guys a whole lot. So you rehearsed a lot. Everybody knew that if you were in that band, you were an excellent musician to begin with. He noticed that about you, but then he rehearsed that until you were until you were just fine, a fine tuned machine. But then you did that all over the world. And then also people know that just because you did a show in, in a town doesn't mean that after the show you went and, and, and chilled and, and whatever, you went and probably did another show in the oh, middle of the night. Oh man, we did another show. Absolutely. That was the, the, the actual show was the easiest part of the day. <laughs> you know, because sound check lasted hours and the show was going to be for a set amount. We know that that's going to run until they turn the lights off on us. And then the after show was till the sun comes up, up the next day. So it's just like it was a three hit day. And that's amazing because so many people today the, it, things have changed so drastically with the ability that everybody's got a little home studio. So now people really believe that that is the whole gist of what it is. When in fact, we're yeah. talking about a whole lot of decibel levels, a whole lot of, a lot of amplification, a whole lot of juice pumping through a stage mm -hmm. to an audience. And that's all you really yeah. know as your bloodline. And yeah. I think that's amazing, man. And yeah. I mean, that was crazy because that, that's the two sides of you, you know, the studio side and the performance side. And uh, what I did like is how we were able to bridge both of those things, you know, because Brit, because Prince was a, was, was fantastic in the studio, but then he also could transfer that to live. And you have some artists that are really great live and not, not the greatest in the studio right. or great in the studio and not great live. Right. Right. And we, you know, but that was not an issue. We're 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 luck we're fortunate in that we are all influenced by that guy in the same way because you know me indirectly mm -hmm. through Jimmy and Terry and the work habits of those mm -hmm. guys were directly related to the work habits that he that that I knew he was he was uh, capable of showing everybody every day, so you know there's the, an incredible work ethic that went along with the love of the music that they shared with us that allowed us to still be doing this today which is which is pretty amazing because there's a lot of ups and downs uh, that people don't know about more so. I mean, in all fairness, you know, it's a beautiful thing when it's working, but when it ain't working and, and you got COVID keeping you down from doing live shows, it ain't all oh, that yeah. glamorous at all out here, is it, in these streets right now? No, absolutely, man. And it's been devastating on the music community. Um, having the gigs just shut down. I mean, we shut down a year ago, almost to the day. And uh, just to see how crazy everything has been with everything shutting down and not really knowing when it's going to come back up. It's, it's really uh, kind of stressful in terms of like what musicians are going to do and what is going to be the situation moving forward. Well, for me, if I could, if, if I could shed light to just one person, if there's one person, I got a lot of international friends and like, just like you. And, you know, if one person sees this video and connects the dots that you're Mr. Hayes and he can, and he can somehow bring you into a situation 
uh, remotely or whatever works that allows you to continue doing what you're doing. Then my then I'm serving yeah. a purpose here because I really want to shed light on Absolutely. guys like you because I, I think you're a, I think you're a genius, man. And I've heard like I said, I stood right next to you when you Appreciate played. That, you didn't even know I was there. And I was like, this is the funkiest <laughs> cat ever. What is it? And, you know, I know keyboard players now. Come on. Now. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, been, yeah, for sure. I've been around no some question. keyboard players in the studio. But check this out, man. Here's here's something that blows my mind, bro. Because this right here is Chaka Khan, bro. That's Chaka yeah. Khan right there. Yeah. So we about the same age, Morris, roughly. You might be a little, little younger yeah, than yeah. me. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I'm a little older than you, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm ancient, bro. But look, here's the deal. Ch I grew up, Chaka was such a big star when I was a, when I was a youngster. Like, you know, you just heard yeah. them song and you just was like, oh my gosh, she's a queen. So she, in this photo, man, it's clear that this diva is working with you, brother. And that says so much about you yeah. in this photo that you're connecting with somebody with that much experience right up there in that shot, man. When I saw that, I, I love that photo right there, bro. Bro, it, it was, that night is beyond amazing. Uh, Shaka herself was like, she's crazy enough as it is in terms of being so dope, man. And, and, and I remember after that show, she's like, yeah, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to call you when I go to do something. She scared the life out of me, man. Cause I'm like, Shaka, I'm not like dope as a cast that you have playing for you. You know, they own some real crazy stuff, but she was so great, man. And, and just such a incredible singer. She, she, she made it at work out that night. And she had to catch a flight, so she had to do her part and then bolt out, man. But it was amazing, man. And then Stevie uh, was there that night, and, and wow. that was the, that's a whole nother story, that's, man. That's what, when Stevie's in the room, he sees everything. It's crazy. Yeah. Hey, man, here's it's a crazy. and now you and now you're mostly working with these these guys, and this man, this is a this lineup right here. These are some hitters right here. You guys, man, from yeah, yeah. I've seen these guys in you know so many different places playing and. Like the bunkers and places like that, and just True. just playing for the love of music, bro. Like showing up and just hitting it really, really hard, man. And and yeah. and and that's left an impression on me, Morris. That's left an impression on me, bro. And so I'm hoping to talk to these guys and and just get their input about life and and hopefully open some opportunities yeah. up for everybody. You know, I, I hope so, man. Because like I said, I think at this point in the, in the music game, we all have to really be supportive of each other. You know. Um, it's it's interesting to see how COVID is affecting these different professions and and, and the arts, like because a lot of people need music and um and need it to, to you know to just kind of heal whatever the the ill is. But then the value of it is like another question, like like they don't assign the same monetary value to it that they do the value of it being a healing property. You know? Right. Right. Well, let me ask you this. So you you got up and you you made that change. You said, you know, Minneapolis is too cold and you moved to Los Angeles. I mean, how's that been for you to move to, to L.A.? Because things are shut down down out there. Right. I mean, what's going on? No, dude, it's bananas. But I don't even live in L.A. anymore. Oh, um, I, I actually moved uh, to to back to Arkansas to take care of my parents. Oh, good, good, good. OK, I, I, I actually left L.A. and went back to Minneapolis and was there for about five months. You did. I and missed then I that. ended okay. up coming back down here. Yeah. And uh, L.A. was cool. Uh, but and I, and really, I, I love Minneapolis, man. I still had a house there. The, uh, the thing is, is that uh, my ex-wife was a L.A. girl. She didn't like the snow, man. She <laughs> slipped down one day. She's like, I'm over it. <laughs> so I bought a house in L.A., man. I was in Sherman Oaks. And and so it was cool though, man. I, I did get a little spoiled, like going with my top down in January. Right. That that will kind of make you feel kind of a little different about Minneapolis. You can drive your convertible in in the January, February. <laughs> You're cool. So that was that was crazy. And I'm living in Florida, so you you know, I already know. And it's it was 60 yeah. today, and I was like, man, it's too cold. Yeah. They got to turn up the heat. I'm well, like, they, well, Minneapolis. They got. A two feet of snow up I north. I mean, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm good. I'm good with. I'm good with that, bro. But let me ask you this, though, man. So in the early days, man, you were very, you were daring, bro. You, your looks were like really extreme, bro. Like you went there, like 
Yeah, I'm amazed yeah. you got hair because I've seen a lot of color, different colors of hair on your head over the man, years. <laughs> for, for a 58-year-old dude, man, I do all right for hair, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not to have to have a hair implant. Man, them was the days. Them, them glam slam days was the days. I just remember being out there at Paisley, uh, invited out to a party and the curtain just going up and y'all just smashing the trying to smash the the place with a with a, with songs and I was, you know and that uh, like I said again that that to me that just left an impression on me that I'll never forget and I'm a and I'm a music professional but I'm also a fan man you know but bro I've taken up enough of your time and I appreciate you so much coming out here and joining me on the show as I try to run this show you know like I said I'm a man with uh, you know two arms and a desire to do a whole lot of things but uh, yeah. With this technology, sometimes it can get in the way, but we don't. We don't let it, man. We gonna we gonna connect one way or another and get in touch. Is there anything, man? You gonna you want to share with us on your way out of this door, man? Any anything at all? Just man, remember during all of this time of COVID and everything that's going on, man. We gotta love each other, brother, and we gotta take care of each other. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's important right now during everything that's going on. I agree with you, bro. I agree with you, bro. That's Morris Hayes, everybody. Mr. Hayes to you, my people. Mr. Hayes to you. And this is fire. Don't burn yourself. Like, slide up against the wall. Just like, at, you know, you slide. Yeah, there you go. Just get on out. Don't burn yourself. Because I ain't got insurance. Peace.